we have th this PLC or this um, piece of technology referred to as a programmable logic controller. Um, and there is a great deal of um, um, installation bases and to many, many different types of industry. But the, the idea is that um, there is also an emerging technology uh, and converging technologies of things like DCS, SCADA, etc. But um, why are they such a popular thing at the moment is basically, or and have been since their inception, is basically that because they are programmable, they can be altered at the factory site and they give a very high level of reliability through their, um, their structure and also the program. So the, um, the componentry um, is uh, fairly familiar to you, um, hopefully, um, and it Base, it uh, varies from the uh, direct interface into the um, the actual uh, process. The um, at the uh, furthest away from the CPU um, is a what is referred to as a remote rack, and the um, the CPU um, rack or the local rack, depending upon what, or the master rack, generally has um, a very close proximity to the uh, to the CPU or the PLCs. Now um, we'll talk about um, different PLCs, but this is one of the uh, the more common infrastructures, in which is referred to as the uh, modular modular rack mounted um, structures, um, and they um, give you the ability to change the configuration of the PLCs uh, to suit the application um, and also give you some level of expansion if you uh, need it that way. Now the idea is that um, all the information has to come to and emanate from the CPU. The, um, the input and output units or the, the devices have to get connected to to the um, the PLC itself, and there is a system of um, uh, communications that actually bring that information to it. So the first one is that um, we have a, um, a a rack of, um, for instance, uh, a, a rack of um, uh, input and output units, okay, um, and the connection between the two is um, via a, um, or this is for the remote rack, is actually via a, uh, a modified network, inf uh, network cable or uh, in network infrastructure where the data that is presented to the, um, the input and output units is converted into a um, a digital um, signal, and that is then translated back up into the the other point. Now, with um, um, devices and what are referred to as local I/O, then instead of it being a uh, translated um, um, infrastructure which uh, connects the bus to the actual uh, input and output points of the modules, there is a cable and the cable is a high density cable that um, really uh, uh, is designed to a very short distance but very large amounts of data. So that there are a couple of ways to interconnect it. So the other, um, so in conceptual terms you have um, several different main componentry of a PLC including uh, inputs, outputs, and how they're interconnected um, to a processor, and the processor, how it actually works through, is by um, the exchange of data. So what uh, I'd like to uh, um, just uh, expand on a point, uh, which I always find is a very important point, is that no, no matter what um, process you have, so for instance, you have a level tank with a um, an input, then the um, the data which is represented or representative of the actual level or whatever that parameter is, 
the installation and the um, and the variability of the installation tends to be the greatest contributor of the um, of the in an inaccuracy of the system. So what we have, what we're always trying to do is trying to get the best interface or the best translation or transduction of the process into an electrical signal. That's the whole point. So, uh, and there are lots of different points, but each one of those do. Um, present themselves as a um, a analog in, or sorry, as a uh, as a input um, signal, or consequently the output, which could be the um, the the amount of energy or the amount of fluid going into the tank. So the, the whole idea is that they, this is re what is referred to as machine control and you basically try to keep the machine under control. Okay, so um, the main componentry is um, the sensors with an interface module. The interface module then has various steps to make sure that the data is presented to the processor. The processor then houses the program. The program then um, is set an algorithm. The algorithm then, based upon the inputs um, status, will set a an output, and then the output is then um, derived and given to a field device, and the field device then changes the process. Okay, so you've got this progression, um, very uh, clear laid out uh, parts. So um, the, how does the, the actual program run? In PLC, traditional PLCs, and in fact all PLCs, um, um, their, their program is run under a cyclic basis and it always um, traditionally runs in a certain fashion. And that fashion or that methodology is that the inputs are, um, their statuses are checked off the actual cables that you put onto the PLC. In other words, they check the, the voltage levels, the current levels, and then determine what that actual um, um, input or that output or that input um, actually is the status. Okay, in other words, what is the signal telling you? It then converts that data into a memory table and, and it gets stored into a memory area. That memory area then is presented to the program as digital data, in other words, a, a series of numbers. That is then um, programmed in a logical sequence to the program through through the program in the algorithm that you've put in and that uh, consequently will give you a series of outputs. That output then goes to a memory area which then gets translated into a um, an output signal which then goes to the, um, the physical device an actuator, for instance, and the thing repeats. Okay, so the idea is that you have a cyclic process. The time by which the input um, is scanned, the output is set, and then the input is scanned again is referred to as the scan time. And um, the scan time does have some um, considerations. Um, and the idea of the, the scan time itself depends upon a, a couple of very um, very clear parameters which you need to take care of. In other words, how many input and output units, the length of the program, and any other um, um, device or routine or function that is heavily influencing the uh, mathematical um, capabilities of the um, or the program capabilities of the actual CPU. Okay, so that there are some various points there. So um, there are 
this isn't a chat, an I chat. I'm not. I'm not. Please don't spend uh, that much time deliberate area over it. But the idea is that um, the, there are over 72 different brands of PLCs on the market, and they are and there are new ones coming aboard all the time. But the idea is that they're usually compared via functions um, in their memory size, their maximum capabilities, and their um, their ability to um, expand um, the the various uh, configurations. Okay, um, <clears throat> so there are a couple of terms which we need to just um, speak of. Firstly, is input or um, the I in I O um, output, the output, and the this term called discrete. Now, discrete has a few different um, names. Digital is another name. Um, very, um, binary is also another name. But the idea is that the data itself, which is generated from the field, is um, uh, is either a one or a zero, and that completely describes the process, or the, the completely describes the sensor or the actuator that you wish. For instance, um, the the status of a light can either be on or off. The status of a push button can either be on or off. The status of a level switch can either be high or low. So the the um, particular unit is completely described by a one or a zero. So hence the um, uh, the actual um, system relates to a one or zero or a binary or digital and there are um, a few different number cultures but the idea is that the whole whole thing the whole system can be defined as ones and zeros on or off so that's um, high or low okay so the um, uh, I mentioned earlier that there are um, a few different ways that the PLCs are interconnected and they are usually um, put into, well, not usually, um, one of the types of PLCs um, is a, a modular racket mounted units. And in that way that you have um, the CPU generally on one of those racks and there's usually some type of um, interface onto the, the back plane of the, um, of the system. And the modules of the input and output units can be slotted into it and the 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 back plane allows the data which is um, generated um, in the modules to be given to the um, CPU and also fed back from the CPU okay so that there's a direct hard connection a multiple uh, a multi um, pin connection to the back plane when that isn't possible to get that direct connection into the, the back plane, a local rack which may need um, to be mounted um, a certain part away or a certain a small distance away uses a um, the extension of that um, that bus unit, which is generally a cable, very short in distance, but um, able to carry a lot of information and um, that is what is referred to as a local act. So it is um, the idea, the information is shared via a very short, um, uh, typically land more than two meter uh, high density cable that would take in a lot of information okay. and, and high speed. So now a lot of machines um, need some type of separation or sorry need some type of spreading out of the actual um, input and outputs because um, they're geographically spread out and hence you need to make uh, more distance from the um, CPU um, to the field devices which could be mounted on a piece of the machinery which could be many kilometers away so in that way there are 
things, uh, there are devices referred to as remote racks, which uses a communications interface to convert the signals that the uh, the bus needs into a, um, a transmission um, standard that is suitable to be um, used over long distances. And uh, Ethernet is one of the serial or Ethernet are one of those type of infrastructures. Okay. Um, any questions?